All right, so I'd like to discuss resonance uh, in a little bit more detail than I did in my last video. So uh, if you watched my last video, um, I showed you the resonance forms for the, uh, the two resonance forms for the acetate ion, and here they are again. Uh, to start with in this video, I'd like to uh, sort of reiterate uh, the similarities and differences between resonance forms. So let's start with the similarities. Uh, first of all, one big similarity is that all of the atoms are in the exact same places. So in other words, that oxygen is that oxygen. That carbon is that carbon. You cannot move the atoms around when you go from one resonance form to the other. In fact, the entire sigma skeleton, if you will, is still intact. All of the atoms and all of the single bonds are still in the same exact places between, between resonance forms. So that alone puts quite a bit of restrictions on how many resonance forms you can draw for a particular compound or ion. Furthermore, the total uh, number of electrons and the total uh, charge is the same. You can verify that. Uh, if you need to, pause the video and, and count up all the electrons. And you know, if you need to, go ahead and reassure yourself that there's the same number of electrons in both of these structures. The only thing about these structures that are different is there's a pi bond that has been switched and there's also another pair of electrons what we call a non-bonding pair that has been switched which gives the other oxygen a formal negative charge. So the two resonance forms differ only in the position of pi electrons and non-bonding electrons. Okay, that's the only difference between them. Okay, so uh, why is resonance important? You know, why do we give a hoot about it? Um, the answer to that question is uh, not very easy, but I've attempted to uh, sketch out the acetate ion and show you a little bit more in depth as to what's going on here. Okay, so uh, this is sort of a, an orbital. Uh, picture for what's going on here. So imagine that uh, the, this carbon is the one that's in the middle, okay? And then uh, the two oxygens are, let's see, so in this case, this corresponds to the pi bond. So that would mean that that would be analogous to this oxygen here. So this oxygen would be like this oxygen in this particular resonance form. Okay, you see that? So what's really going on here is that, uh, well, first of all, these blue things, these are all p orbitals, okay? So let's focus on the resonance form on the left. In the resonance form on the left, these two p orbitals are overlapping to form a pi bond. Now, it doesn't look like they're overlapping in this picture, but for clarity's sake, I've drawn them separately. So these two orbitals are overlap overlapping to form a pi bond while this p orbital has an electron pair in it. And then in the other resonance form, it's flip-flopped. Okay, these two orbitals are now the ones that are overlapping to form the pi bond. And this one has the, uh, the lone pair, the extra lone pair, if you will. So uh, one of the things about these resonance forms is that you have to have uh, parallel p orbitals in order to get the magic to work, okay? And the reason why is because, um, as I stated in my last video, uh, the, the, the real uh, structure of the acetate ion is actually a hybrid between these two things. And the reason why is because these p orbitals, because they're so close to one another, they allow the electrons to be delocalized over the entire three atom system. So if you turn your attention to this resonance form right here, What's really going on is there's sort of a delocalization of electrons, and I'll try to draw that like this. So instead of them being isolated as they are in this resonance form, where you have two electrons as a pair and then the other two as a pi bond, you have all four of the electrons delocalized over this entire three atom system. So the resonance hybrid is actually actually has more electrons uh, delocalized around more atoms than either of the two resonance forms uh, from which you know the hybrid uh, arises. So, uh, what what is so significant about uh, the 
electron delocalization? Well, in terms of uh, energetics, uh, resonance delocalization lowers the energy of the particular molecule or ion. So that means that the resonance hybrid of acetate ion is actually, this thing right here, is actually uh, lower in energy than either of the two resonance forms. So the resonance hybrid is lower, than, lower in energy than each of the two resonance forms. So if I draw these two things again, getting rid of the bond that I just made, let's see. Yeah, the hybrid that forms, the, the, the true acetate ion, which is the hybrid between these two forms, is lower in energy than either of these two forms. And that's important because chemical systems like to proceed towards lowest potential energy. Sort of analogous to if you uh, throw up a ball, it'll fall down. The reason why is because there is a lower energy associated with the ball being on the ground. And basically what this lower energy comes from is, is charge separation. When the, charge, uh, when the negative charge is separated over a, a larger area, uh, that means that the molecule can, is, is, is more stable. There's more places per unit volume or unit area to put that charge. So uh, that is basically uh, resonance um, in a little bit further detail. Uh, in a later video, uh, I'm going to go through a couple of examples where I uh, you know, practice drawing the different you know, various types of resonance forms with different uh, molecules and ions and what have you. So, all right, hope this video helped and uh, feel free to leave your feedback.